Hallelujah, hallelujah. May God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm wearing a shirt that has uh, my nephews on it. Three nieces and one, uh, and one nephew. In case you are wondering, blessed family. <laughs> they are not my children. In case you are wondering, I have, by the grace of God, I, I'm, a, I'm a parent too. But these are my, nep my nephews. Blessed family, in case you are wondering. Okay, we clear that out of the way. Hallelujah. Now let's come to the word of God. Hallelujah. Open your Bible into the Gospel of Mark. Gospel of Mark chapter 8. We're going to read from verse 22 to verse 24. The Gospel of Mark chapter 8. Verse 22 to verse 24. Somehow there are so much preaching in this passage. If you realize I, I, I use this passage to bring you a sermon called titled A Second Touch. You need a second touch, something like that. And I brought you a message recently talking about to leave the cursed location. Hallelujah. Somehow God is not down with this passage. Hallelujah. There's no need of using different passages when you can find a preaching element out of a passage that can be a blessing to everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Mark chapter 8, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verse 22 to 24, I read. Then he came to Bethesda, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hand on him, he asked him if he saw anything verse 24 and the blind man looked up and said i see men like trees walking verse 24 again and the blind man looked up and said i see men like tree like trees walking hallelujah i want to focus on verse 24 as i bring you a message title the danger of a partial blessing or the danger of a partial salvation. Hallelujah. The danger of a partial blessing or the danger of a partial salvation. You wonder if there is a, something called a partial blessing. We'll see about it. You wonder if there is something like a partial salvation. We'll see about it. Hallelujah. When you look at so many Christians and what Christians claim that God can do, when you look at so many of us who go to church, you look at the word of God in one hand and you look at our lifestyle in the other hand, generally you will not see the complete fulfillment of the word of God in the life of those Christians. Have you ever seen some Christians and you wonder what type of Bible are they reading when you know how they are living? When you examine their lifestyle, things they cherish and things they seem to adorn themselves to, when you compare the churches they are going and the book of the the book they are reading, the Bible, and you know that the Bible has some stuff in it that require that whoever reads the Bible, that person get influenced about the element written in the Bible. When you look at the two, you don't see often that there is uh, equality in between what the Bible wants and what the Christian is exemplifying. You see that there is a difference between the life of a Christian and the Word of God. Hallelujah. The reality of many of us is that uh, we have a partial blessing from God. I say again, the reality of many of us is we do not have the full blessing of God in our life. Even as a ministry, as a church, Jesus said, go and heal the sick. Jesus said, go and deliver the oppressed. Jesus said, go and, and, and raise the dead from death. Raise the dead from death. Raise them up, resurrect them and all that. When we look at a church, how many churches do you know are fulfilling what Jesus said? Jesus, I know, Jesus 
told his disciples that you are go, you will go to the four corners of the earth. Make all, all my disciples preaching the word of God, delivering people. When you observe the life of the apostle and you look at all Christians today, do you see the complete fulfillment of the word of God in our lives? When you look at us, you, you don't have to see that there is a equality. You know, you cannot identify that the two are very similar. But you see often that there is a dichotomy, there is a difference. Oh, then you are wondering, uh, is anybody completely saved? Or, or when you are talking about the blessings of God, uh, where God has divided the Red Sea, and the Bible said the people walk on dry land. Uh, you see, God, God raised people from the dead. Uh, Jonas lived in the, in the mouth of the fish for three days. And uh, Jesus said, uh, oh, you eat poisonous thing and will not harm you. But we have heard of Christians that were killed by poison and all kind of stuff. You can agree that there is a partial blessing in many of our lives. You can agree that our salvation is not as full as they say. Paul said, oh, I live for Christ. It's no longer I that live. But when you look at many of us, you realize that we are still living for ourselves. A little some percentage justifying the title of a partial blessing or a partial salvation. Many of us can identify with the situation of this blind man in the text. In Mark chapter 8 that we read together, this blind man was brought to Jesus so he can see. That's the goal. He's a blind man. The biggest need he has is to see. So they brought him to Jesus and the pastor said they want Jesus to touch him and to heal him, of course, because I'm sure these people have heard that Jesus went to other places. Oh, the blind Bartimaeus and other people that Jesus has healed. Jesus touched them and all kind of stuff that Jesus do to heal the people. They brought the blind man to Jesus so he can recover his sight. And uh, Jesus touched the man. Ah, don't rush out of that. Don't rush out of that. We're talking about Jesus, the Son of God. Uh, we're talking about Jesus, the sinless perfection. We're talking about Jesus, our master, the one who came to show us the example of how to preach. The one who came to show us the examples of how to demonstrate the power of God. Jesus touched this blind man. But when the blind man looked up, he saw men like trees walking. My goodness, that's where the nucleus of my sermon is. Jesus touched the man. Let me say it again. Not an apostle touched the man. Not a normal pastor touched the man. Not a bishop touched the man. Not an ordinary Christian touched the man. Jesus touched the blind man. But somehow, when the blind man look up, we will, we will, I will expect that the blind man will see perfectly well because it was Jesus we are talking about now. He cannot perform a partial blessing, but somehow the blind man looked up and he saw men like trees walking. He saw things in a schizophrenic way. He received a miracle, but the miracle was partial. He received a blessing from Jesus, but the blessing is a crazy blessing. This blind man can see, but he see people like trees. Trees are living things, but they are considered objects. Oh, trees are living things, but they don't move around like human beings. Trees are also considered living things because they have leaves. They can live and die and all that, but trees don't have the same value as human beings. But this man is, is looking at people like trees walking. His vision, he regained his sight, all right? He reserves some kind of sight, all right? But the sight is crazy. The sight is reversed. The sight that this man got is making him to confuse things, to confuse things around her. Isn't it like you and I? We were sinners and we were crazy sinners. Uh, when we come to God, uh, 
We know that God has done something in our lives. When we come to Jesus, we cannot deny that the hand of God has been demonstrated in our lives. But when we look at the result, the result is not complete. Our blessing, our salvation is not complete. Maybe you used to have three girlfriends all together and you lie to all of them. Even you do a threesome with all of them, but now you only have one girlfriend. You have a partial salvation. Maybe you to be angry and cuss people out. You to be angry and the police have to be called. You to be angry and you want to kill somebody. You have hurt people before. But now that you have met Jesus, Jesus has done something in you. You are like this blind man. You have received a touch from Jesus. But the touch is now complete. And now you are a dangerous person because you are calling yourself somebody who have given your life to Jesus. Yes, you have given your life to Jesus, but the reflection in your life, uh, the type of lifestyle you are living, uh, is not completely reflecting of Jesus. The sinless per perfection is not reflecting the life that the Word of God requires us to be living. You are like this blind man. Yes, you can realize that God has touched you Maybe you had some demonic forces tormenting you before and you went to Jesus, you were prayed for, or you confessed Jesus. You have seen some kind of change in your life, but the change is not complete. And you are living a hypocritical lifestyle. Oh, in one hand, you say God can save people, but you know that God has not saved you completely. You have to live a hypocritical lifestyle because with what you say, you claim that Jesus can do it. You claim that Jesus has touched your life. Yes, Jesus has touched your life. But your new life is not a complete life of salvation. You have a partial salvation. You have a partial salvation. I'm saying that many of us, we can see ourselves in the life of this blind man. Although we, we find it strange when we read the passage, it's because the Spirit of God has not illuminated you on the passage uh, Maybe you to be an open sinner. You don't mind telling people how you live in sin, how you do this and you do that. But now that you went to Jesus, the, the, the gospel has convinced, God has convinced you about sin and, 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 and you gave your life to Jesus. Somehow, some change has occurred in your life, but your life is not entirely transformed. And you are living this schizophrenic life. You mean you're living this crazy life. You see different things, and you do different things. Today you are up, tomorrow you are down. Your life is all messed up because you have received a partial blessing from God. Maybe you want to be honest and say, God, talk about healing us. But many of us who are sick and we went to God, not many of us can testify that God has removed the complete sickness out of our lives. God, my, God have touched you and you don't, you're not dead. God have touched you, you are not in the ICU, you are not in the hospital, hospitalized. But if the truth is to be told, there are some illnesses you are still dealing with. You still have to go see the doctor sometimes. You still have to be on medication sometimes. You still have to be careful how you live your life sometimes. You are still limited by the sickness that is still ravaging your body. Because God has touched you, but you have received a partial healing from God. My goodness. I know we all try to dress good for men to wear a tie and a suit. Oh, the women to wear a dress and wear whatever they wear. We want to look like we are a million dollars. We want to behave like this. We are going to church. Our life has been financially completely transformed. And we, we know how to fake it. We know how to fake it acting like we are making it. Fake it as we are making it. But the truth of the matter is we don't have a lot of money. We are miserable like many other people because we have a partial blessing in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This, and spiritually speaking, spiritually speaking, you know when you are completely saved, when you have a spirit and the total salvation of Jesus Christ, uh, you'll be translated. The Bible said uh, in one of the books of Paul that 
we are translated from the kingdom of darkness to, the, to his marvelous light. From the kingdom of darkness to his marvelous light. When you are really saved, there ought to be a spiritual transfer. There ought to be a spiritual translation from darkness to light. Many of us, we have experienced something, but we cannot call it uh, that we have moved to the marvelous light, uh, to the marvelous that We know there has been a change in our lives. Uh, oh, our dream life, the way the de demons used to oppress us, uh, it's not the same way, but still, demonic forces are oppressing our life. Why? Because we have a partial salvation. We have a partial blessing from God, like this blind man. My goodness. My goodness. What is the danger of being partially blessed? What is the danger of being partially saved? The danger of that is we do not reflect entirely what the word of God wants us to be. The danger is we do not enjoy fully the blessing of God. And we are living a hypocritical life. Our life is vain of faith. I say our life is vain of faith. We do not have faith because we want to claim that God is so big. God can do all these things. But we, when we look at ourselves, we are struggling to have them. How when you have to pray and pray and pray before you receive uh, a small uh, blessings. Uh, when you have to fast and life is hard, uh, you have to seek, you have to do this and do that before you come out of a small situation. You do not feel like you are blessed. You do not feel like the hand of God is in your life. Because you feel into the image of this blind man. God has intentionally put this passage in the word of God uh, to cover your eye. That we can have some situation in our life uh, that reflect a partial salvation, that reflect a partial blessing. The danger is we are frustrated. The danger is we are we are ashamed to the name of God. Uh, when people know you, you go to church, uh, but sometimes you do some sin that people see. People say, Oh, look at you, you are a hypocrite. You are saying you have to live a hypocritical life. God has delivered you from, for some, from some stuff. From some sinful lifestyle, but some are still fighting you. You are struggling with some other sins, uh, and you have to hide and go commit the sin. You have to hide and do bad things sometimes. You are frustrated yourself. You are unable to affirm that the word of God is in its place. But don't worry, God has this passage to cover you and I. Oh my goodness, I say again, God has this passage to cover you and I. Why? Because God wants to deliver us from the danger. Of a partial salvation and from the danger of a partial blessing. Hallelujah, somebody. Hey, hallelujah. God wanna deliver us from this danger. My goodness, how do you have faith when you see a change, but the change is not complete? If you're not careful, you feel like God cannot do it. But God has this passage to cover you and I to show us that. There will be this situation in some people's life. And if the situation is like that, look at the way the blind man behaved. What did the blind man he behave? What the blind man was seeing? Oh, this in a confused way. When the blind man has a schizophrenic way, say, oh, I see people like three. Oh, if it does, we're going to send him to a mental hospital that this guy seeing people like trees walking. Oh, he's a crazy, oh, he got a crazy blessing. Uh, oh, what is the solution? Uh, oh, what to do is when you have the partial blessing, what to do is to hang out, to hang out with Jesus still. Uh, what to do is you should still hang out with Jesus. What does that mean? Uh, when you have the crazy blessing, uh, don't be content with the crazy blessing. Uh, when you have a partial blessing, you have a partial salvation. Uh, don't say, well, that's how it is. And God is unable to save entirely. Uh, still hang out with Jesus. Uh, when the man says he saw men like trees, when the blind man say he saw men like trees walking, he did not live with that. That's what some of us we do. Many of us, that's what we do. We see that small change and we say, oh, that's it. Well, I got something. But when you God is not good enough to glorify the name of God, what is what if God is not good enough to reflect the big God that we serve? 
What you have received is a partial salvation, a partial blessing. And you cannot fully tell people that you are really delivered, that you are really transformed. Your life is completely transformed. You cannot say that. Because the sin is, is fighting you. Oh, you still have some struggle in your life. Uh, your life is not reflecting the total glory of God. Uh, some demonic forces are, are still harassing you and all that, dominate you and all that. Your mind is corrupt. Uh, your mind is corrupt. Uh, your mind is filthy. You think more of a sinful thing than a holy thing. And you are wondering, what is this salvation thing? What to do? Hang out with Jesus. The blind man, let's go back to the text, Mark chapter 8, uh, verse 20, <clears throat> 25. <clears throat> Excuse me. The blind man, what did he do? Then the blind man told Jesus in 24 that he saw a man like he was walking, right? Then Jesus, then the man didn't run away to say, oh, I couldn't see before I can see something. That's what many of us are. We never get to verse 25. The man hang out with Jesus. Then Jesus put his hand on his eyes again. The man didn't run away. The man didn't say, oh, I got you, that's enough. Don't limit God with your small eyes. Don't limit God with your small brain. I shouldn't limit God with my small brain. I shouldn't limit God with my small perception. You see that, oh, God has done something, but, but, but it's, it's, not, it's not complete. But, well, I'll just live with this. It's at least a change. A change has occurred in my life. No. Jesus can touch you again. So what you do when you have a partial blessing of God, keep on hanging around Jesus Christ. What to do when your salvation is not complete? Uh, you've given your life to Jesus, uh, but somehow, somehow, uh, oh, your, your whole sinful lifestyle uh, has not been transformed. Uh, only partial transformation you have seen. Uh, what you do is to hang out still with Jesus. Uh, do not depart and be living a schizophrenic lifestyle. Uh, do not depart and unable to shout that God has done a miracle in your life. Uh, because your miracle is crazy. Your, your blessing is special. Your salvation is special. Hang out with Jesus. What I like about the passage is, Jesus didn't say, okay. Oh, you were blind. But now you can at least see people like trees walking. Just live with that. Jesus didn't say that. Just live with that. And when you see trees walking, since you are seeing trees walking, just say that's man for you. Jesus didn't leave the man to go like that. But Jesus touched him again, hallelujah. Jesus touched him again, and, and what happened at the second touch? The man can see now clearly. We need a full blessing of God. Are you touched by God in a health situation? Are you touched by God in a spiritual problem? And you saw some improvement, but the improvement is not correct, it's not complete. Oh, then you are fearful, you are making the conclusion. That God can change, but you cannot affirm the word that God promised in the Bible. I will do miracles, I will do this and that, it can happen. Many of us, we don't believe we can raise the, the, the dead people. But it happened in the Bible, it happened in some places. Why? Because we are content with the partial blessing. We are content with the little God has given us, but Jesus is not done uh, Jesus does not solve the problem for everybody in one touch. I want to say that again. Jesus does not solve the problem. Jesus does not solve the problem of, every, of everybody in one touch. Some of us have to go back and get a second touch from Jesus. Oh, what we need to do is evaluate the problem. Look at this blind man. Oh, Jesus said, did you see anything? He said, yeah, I can see. But what I see is crazy. Don't just see something and run away with it and think that's all God can offer. God is still a big God. God is still a mighty God. He can do so many things. It's up to you now to see, to, to analyze the result, the result that you see. Take it to God and say, God, my result is crazy. My blessing is partial. My salvation is partial. Where is the transformation? Where is the joy of salvation they are talking about? What is the deliverance from sin they are talking about? 
Go to God. Hang out with Jesus. So Jesus can touch you again. So you can be like this man may have seen entirely. Hallelujah. The danger of a partial blessing. The danger of a partial salvation. When you are not completely saved, you become a danger for the church. You spoil the image of a Christian. Partial blessing, you are not very happy. You are not sad either. But you begin to limit God. Let me tell you to evaluate your situation. God has taught you, yeah, you saw that. Some changes has happened. But that's not it. You say, well, I went to church. And, and, and sometimes we preachers, we mess people up. We say, yeah, when you go to Jesus, everything will be all right. Once you come back to Jesus, everything will be all right, right away. And when people give their life to Jesus, they see some change, but the change is not complete. They are discouraged because they think that, oh, that's just all God can do. And they are content with the partial blessing. They are content with the partial salvation. Living a hypocritical lifestyle, not enjoying fully the blessing of God, the deliverance and the full joy of salvation. It's not in their life because sin is still harassing them. The money force is still, are still harassing them. And they are divided. They say, what is this gospel thing you guys are talking about? But Jesus can touch you again. Just like he touched this blind man. And the blind man can see perfectly. He can see clearly. He can see people like people. He does not identify human beings with objects like trees. My goodness. He put human who have high, good heart, proudity, on the least, no human equal to, uh, to trees. Hallelujah. Many of us, we are confused. We are wicked. Uh, we are terrible. We are selfish. Uh, we are machiavellic. Uh, we are very wicked. Uh, we don't respect women's life. We don't, hurt, we don't mind hurting people because we do not have the second touch from Jesus. God is bringing this message to you that there is a danger when you have a partial blessing. There's a danger when you have a, a partial salvation. But the good news is God, Jesus can take your partial salvation and make it a complete salvation. Jesus can take your partial blessing and make it a complete blessing. Hallelujah. Let's pray. My friend, what is your partial blessing? Bring it to Jesus now. Say, Jesus, you touch me, but I have a partial blessing. This is it. I'm seeing men like trees walking. What I'm seeing is crazy. My result is crazy. Ah, I, I was a homosexual. I'm no longer a homosexual, but now I'm just loving a lot of women. I'm sleeping with a lot of women. I went from being gay from sleeping with a lot of women. You say, oh, Jesus, me, I used to drink a lot of alcohol, a whole bottle, but now I just take a shot every day. I reduce the quantity, but I'm still uh, uh, drinking. You say, oh, I was very, very selfish. 100% selfish before, but now I'm just 75% selfish. What is your situation? Do you have an illness? You mentioned that you know that there was some improvement, but the improvement is not complete. The sickness is still there. You want to rejoice that you are healed, but it's just an improvement. You take medication and you don't want people to know because you tell people, Jesus touched me, but the blessing is not complete. What is your lifestyle? Do you see things in reverse? Jesus can touch you again. Hallelujah. Whatever your situation is, are you very selfish? Very, very selfish. Things have to go your way all the time. You know, ah, Jesus touched me somehow, but I did, that one is still there. Or it's still there. Most of it is still there. Bring it to Jesus, like this blind man. The blind man didn't just jump away happy that Jesus touched him and he can just see something. But he told Jesus what he's seen. Many of us need to stop being hypocritic, hypocritical and go to God with our problems and say, God, this is not all you can offer. You can change me more than this. Your power that I read in the Bible is much mightier than what I'm experiencing. God, you can change my situation. God, you have saved me. Demonic influence and all are reduced, but some of them are still harassing me. Take the image to Jesus. 
Give your partial blessing to Jesus. Like this blind man did. And Jesus touched him again. And he can see everything clearly. Hallelujah. Talk to God. If you need to pause this video, pause it and talk to God. Pray about your situation. Talk to God. Pray properly. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is moving. Pray properly. Hallelujah. Bring your situation to God. Oh God, touch my life. Or a situation in my life that I experience your partial blessing, your partial salvation. Oh Lord Jesus, deliver me. Lord Jesus, transform me. Lord Jesus, give me your full salvation. Transform my mind, the renewing of the mind that you talk about in Romans 12. Give it to me. The, the circumcision of the heart, circumcise my heart. Transform me entirely. Oh, being translated from the kingdom of darkness to the marvelous light of Jesus. Let that take place in my life. Completely take place in my life. My friend, talk to God. Talk to God. So God can transform you. God sent his message to touch you again. So the danger of partial blessing can be removed. The danger of partial salvation can be removed. In Jesus' name. Father God Almighty, we worship you. We magnify you for your grace and power. Thank you for this message you have given us. Thank you for this message you have preached to your people. We pray that their life be transformed. We pray that your power reach them again. Touch them a second time. Some of them need your touch a third time. Some of them need your touch 20, 20, 20 first time. 22nd time. Some of them need a the 40th time. Touch them as much as you need to. Until their life is completely transformed. So they can receive your, your full salvation. So they can receive your full blessing. So they can rejoice that you are not a lying God. What you say you can do. Let what you promise in your word can be seen in their life. So the joy can be complete. The faith can be total. Because they can see that yes, God can really do this. God has done the whole transformation in my life. Lord, do it for everybody. Do it for even myself. Any aspect in my life where your blessings or your salvation is partial, Lord, make the salvation complete. Let it make the blessing complete. In the name of Jesus. Lord, and I pray for anybody hearing me. I pray that your power, oh, goes into their soul, spirit, and body right now, transforming them and giving them the full blessing, giving them the full salvation. So from today onward, their life will reflect the glory of God, the complete glory of God, so they will not have the danger of a partial blessing anymore. They will not have the danger of partial salvation anymore. anymore. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. I am blessed myself. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, God, hallelujah. Roma Sato Yamerum Baso City. Mikatu Kazeman Tofeyun Karabobo. Nemete Fenzo Sintayako Rim Berumama. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm blessed myself by this sermon. It's the word of God. It's not my word. God inspired me to preach it. I find myself in it. I told you recently. I told you. I see myself out in the word of God. It's not my word. Some of them, God brings it to transform our whole lives. Because we are you, the, 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 the people listening to the word of God. We preachers. We are all human. Hallelujah. We are just vessels God is using to bring his word. Hallelujah. Hey, this has ministered to me big time. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Be blessed. Hallelujah. I can't help it but to burst into speaking in tongues. Because the power of God in this sermon is so powerful. The power is so powerful. Hallelujah. We praise God. Amen. Be blessed. Share this message with people. Listen to it again and again. Let me tell you, when there is power in the preaching, the more you are listening to it, the power is working in your life. You may listen to this sermon and the power touch your life 30%. Listen to it again. It will increase. It will keep on increasing because there are 19 of the Holy Ghost is in the sermon. Hallelujah. Quick come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. 
You can in the word of God. Play it again and again. And God will touch you. Your salvation will be complete. Your blessing will be full. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.